All right, so today we're jumping in right where we left off at the end of the last upload on the 89 Comanche. Today we're gonna to be building a custom mandrel bent TIG welded stainless steel exhaust for this rock crawler. My name's LT and on this channel, you're usually gonna find me in the shop here building custom high performance and off-road trucks as of late. So if that content appeals to you, we do a lot of how-to stuff, a lot of in-depth technical content, and of course we have some fun. Uh, so if that does appeal to you, help me out and hit that subscribe button because we need to reach 100,000 subs by the end of this year. So just to kind of get you up to speed, you might want to go check out the last video that we did. That kind of overviews the vehicle. Again, it's an 89 Comanche and the owner's done a whole bunch of work on it, transforming it into a very capable off-road machine. Now under the hood, we've got a four liter straight six. And in that last video, we installed a header and then I chopped off the two bolt donut gasket style flange that was on the header and then we replaced it with a stainless v-band and that's where our exhaust system is going to start today now we do have a couple of goals with this system mainly we want to have a better quality system because the stuff that's on there i'll show you in a minute when we take it off uh, is kind of just like scabbed together it's not a very quality system number two we want to have something that performs a little better we'll have a consistent diameter of pipe through the bend with the mandrel bends instead of the muffler shop crimp style bends and then uh, you know ground clearance better flow and then we want to have it sound a little cooler and look a little cooler because we're going to be doing a bedside exit which in my opinion is really cool so it's going to go right there in between the rock slider and this lower body line there in terms of materials, here's what we're going to be using. We've got a box from Summit that includes four of everything. So four two and a quarter straights, four 90s, four 45s, four 180s, and then we've got a Magnaflow muffler. We've got an assortment of different styles of hangers, and we have a little bit of flex pipe right here, which we'll probably put right off the manifold just to kind of isolate the engine from any vibration and motion that it's going to have as it runs. So um, first things first, let's get the old exhaust system out of the way. Now there's a lot of interesting stuff going on with this original exhaust system that we're gonna be replacing. So I just kinda of wanted to show you real quick what we're working with and also how we're going to be improving it. So here's the whole system exactly as we removed it. Didn't have to do any cutting or anything. Starts up there at the old manifold flange. There's a joint in the middle, then it dumps just before the rear axle. So first of all, this whole system is made from like two inch material. And I'm guessing this first part until right there is original to some kind of a Jeep, just guessing based on the rustiness of the material. Now this is basically two inch pipe, but if you actually measure in the bends, it gets a little bit narrower by about an eighth of an inch. And that's one thing that mandrel bends do not do. A mandrel bend maintains consistent diameter all the way through the bed. So number one, there's an improvement there. Also, where this thing attached to the stock exhaust manifold, there's a lot of really weird like smashed sections and crimp sections. So not really sure if that was factory to kind of clearance around something or maybe that happened after the fact, not sure. But either way, we're gonna do better. Now, I know I've seen the episode of Engine Masters where they smash the headers on the dyno when they test to see if it makes any real reduction in horsepower. And they showed basically it doesn't, but you still ought to have a properly sized exhaust system. And I just hate looking at pipe that's completely smashed and ridiculous like that. So uh, we're going with two and a quarter inch pipe. So that's like what a 12 and a half percent increase, whatever the math works out to be in diameter. Anyway, we're going from two inch to two and a quarter mandrel bent. So a little bit further back in the exhaust system, this is the kind of stuff that just drives me crazy. We've got a MIG welded joint 
between this, I think, factory section and this middle pipe here. We'll get to that weld in a second. Um, but they have slip couplings, which I hate using, and then it's just kind of booger welded together. I mean, more than likely, this was just installed in the truck, so it's very difficult to get the top side of these joints. But that's just sloppy work, and to me, there's no excuse for that. A little bit further back, things get even worse. So they had to add this little coupler in here to make the exhaust system serviceable so you can disconnect it. But I mean, look at that. It's just like piles and piles of weld on there. You've got the little dingleberries kind of hanging out there. It was leaking. So even after all that effort to squeeze what I'm guessing is a two and a half inch flange or a pipe onto a two inch pipe, it still leaked. And the other side certainly doesn't look any better. And if you can kind of see in there, there's like four or five different layers of pipe to make that transition work. So um, definitely we're gonna be replacing this with a proper V-band so we can still disconnect the system and it's gonna look a million times better than that. Uh, back here, we've got some weird like ultra quiet resonator or something, not entirely sure what that's all about. And then we've got a muffler and then just a turn down with a couple of hangers that attached to the bottom of the frame. So obviously we're gonna be replacing it with better materials. This is all stainless steel and it's all gonna be mandrel bent and it's a little bit bigger. So we're gonna get started by attaching to the V-band that's currently on the headers.
So it's like eight o'clock at night and I've just been kind of going to town, getting a bunch of stuff knocked out. And I think my GoPro died like halfway in the middle of it all, but we've got the front half of the system like 95% done and I only have one seam left to go. Now, whenever you're building an exhaust uh, on anything, you just want to make sure you keep in mind what's going to be moving. And on this vehicle, uh, the front drive shaft is the big one. That axle is going to be moving up and down probably um, at least where the drive shaft is, it's probably going to go up at least a good, you know, four or five, maybe six inches from where it's at right now. Now on a street rod, you don't have to worry about any of that really. I mean, you got some suspension stuff that moves a little bit, but off-road stuff is really, really critical that you keep in mind and kind of plan ahead in terms of what's going to be moving around because you don't want like the drive shaft to crash into the exhaust. So anyway, let me show you what we've come up with. This is the front half of the system and it is in two separate halves. Uh, we've got a V-band and a hanger right here and the cross member sits kind of right here. And the only thing I have left to do on this is attach the mating hanger um, onto the back of the cross member. Uh, V-band is fully welded. Up front, we have an O2 bung. We got the V-band already welded on the flex pipe. And then this is the last connection that we're gonna have to make. So if I can get back here far enough, that's kind of a preview of the, what the front of the system is gonna look like. Now, the reason why I left this particular bend for very last is because any slight like half of a degree twist here in the wrong direction is going to be amplified down there and it's going to put that v-band either too high up into the floor or too low and hit the cross member so i'm going to get basically everything in place i'll put a little spacer or something back there or maybe just get the hanger welded on and then finally I'll tack weld that together onto the truck, take it back out. You guys know that I always love to finish weld my exhaust out on the bench. I never weld them underneath the truck. Uh, but in some cases, you do have to make tack welds underneath just because you have to lock it in position. Like I said, a half of a degree can make a big difference, especially if the twist is translated to a section that's maybe like two or three feet away. So back under the truck we go. It was like our major pain in the butt trying to tack weld that very last connection underneath the truck simply because I didn't have a good way to hold the two pipes exactly where they needed to be other than just using my hand and trying to do a fusion tack. Now I hate doing fusion tack welds because it seems like with my machine it's 50-50 whether or not it's going to take. So I got two of them that just kind of barely held on there um, and then I had to take the whole system out. But luckily those two tack welds were enough to at least you know, kind of lock it down in position. So I final welded the last joint out here on the table. I added a barb style hanger on the end. And uh, oh, speaking of hangers, I kind of wanted to talk about that for a second because I feel like exhaust hangers are one of the most like overlooked parts of building a custom exhaust system because, you know, at first you might think, well, it's just a hanger. It's just going to hold the pipe there, but you need something that's permanent, that's not going to move around. And you want something that's not going to fail. Like say if you weld a hanger on just with one small spot, it potentially could crack, especially if you have thin wall exhaust tube. Uh, so my preferred style is the OEM like barb and rubber isolator style of exhaust hanger. They do take a lot of time to put on and put them exactly where you want them to be. Um, but they provide a good mount. They're isolated in rubber and they let everything flex and twist around. And that's pretty important when you're designing an exhaust system because I mean, think about it, the engine's mounted in rubber and it's gonna kind of rock back and forth as you're on and off the throttle. And then just there's always a little bit of twist and flex in the chassis. So you don't wanna rigidly mount your exhaust system. 
Now the previous setup that was on here used just kind of part store generic exhaust hangers, which I really hate. I, I loathe these things. I mean, this style back here, it just looks awful. It bolts on with two big massive bolts. It rusts and it's like mounted in a mud flap kind of piece of rubber here. And then you just have this flat piece of band stock that you just have a couple holes in and you bolt this onto the chassis. And the bolt, that could always back out. This little thing right here, that definitely does not look permanent or long-term. Uh, this style up here, I like this a little bit better, but still it's, it's bolted to the chassis. Anytime you have something that's bolted to the chassis, there's always a slight possibility that's going to move around and potentially the fastener could back out and then your exhaust system's going to drop down. So that's why I always prefer the OEM style barb and rubber isolator mount. Like I said, they do take a lot more time to install, but say if this mount does fail for any reason, which they pretty much never do, all you've got to do is go to the parts store and get another one because they're a readily available item. Um, this is the part number I've been using for the last couple systems here. Um, they show an application on here. This is just kind of what they are called for, I guess. Um, a lot of foreign stuff on there. Oh, look, Ford, 05 to 07 Ford 500. So yeah, just go ask for one of those hangers. Um, as far as the barb stock goes, you can get this stuff in 3 8 which I always like to use, or even half inch, but the half inch stuff is overkill. These are vibrant and they're stainless, so I've got one welded onto the end like I mentioned there, and the other one is welded onto the transmission cross member, and both of them have an extra reinforcement arm on there, so it's permanent, and the only way that this exhaust is ever going to move around somewhere where it's not supposed to is if he gets like high centered on a rock and it's got a pointy spot that kind of jams up a little bit higher than the frame rail because this exhaust has so much more ground clearance than the old one does. It fits so much better. And if you just look at the two side by side, I mean, it just looks a whole lot cooler as well. Um, so we've got larger pipe, we've got constant diameter bands, and now we don't have ugly booger wells like that. Also, I did try something a little different on this system. Normally I leave some colors on the welds. This time I wanted to see what it would look like if I kind of did a brushed finish on the whole thing. So after I did all the welding, I took some red scotch bright and I just kind of scuffed the entire system front to back. And it just kind of gives it a cool, a little bit more low key system because instead of seeing a color band on every weld seam, it just looks a little more consistent. So there you go. There's the before and after. It's like the old, um, you know, you versus the guy she told you not to worry about kind of thing. Anyway, I'll get this installed, put some pictures up on the screen here of what it looks like when it's done. And that is gonna call it a conclusion to this video because I've got a trip coming up. It's actually Friday afternoon now. Um, I gotta be somewhere Saturday. So I'll conclude this video and next week I'll show you the building of the last half of the exhaust system. I'll try to make it quick because I know this stuff does drag on. And then the most important thing everyone wants to hear is always the sound clip of what this four liter is gonna sound like with two and a quarter inch exhaust, a header, and then finally the MagnaFlow muffler. So, couple things I'd like you to do, if you don't mind, please um, hit the subscribe button because we're trying to get to 100K. Drop a comment down below about what you think of this system. Maybe tell me what your favorite kind of muffler is because I'm always trying something new. And finally, click the like button. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in a couple of days.